Good evening, all. Welcome. This is FMA Discussion, episode 137, and tonight we are featuring Guru Kayan Kahudo. And tonight he'll be discussing his system, his journey, as well as his blade craft and the making of the, those gorgeous blades. So, hey, thank you. Thank you for coming on. Thanks for having me, Dean. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So, yeah, I forget who, I can't remember who actually uh, sent me a referral on you. I, actually, no, I think it was Chad. I think it was Chad, I think. Chad Bailey. Yeah. So, all right, let's jump into it because we know we got to get out of here about an hour or so. So, um, I want to cover your journey first before we get into the weapons and, and your, you know, and your offerings and, and what you, you know, you've been making there. So what, um, let's talk about your initial FMA, you know, your, your ex initial FMA experience, your background. Was it, uh, somebody here in America or you know, what, uh, what say? Yeah. So, um, so when I was 17, I met my first instructor, Rafi Pambuan, Pambuan Arnis Tulison Caballero. And uh, that was uh, in Florida, and uh, okay. started training at age 16 with him. And I turned um, 20. I I went to the Philippines and I got to train with his dad. And um, at that time, you know, FMA was not very popular in the Philippines. Well, what year about uh, you're talking about? What year? Uh, I see. I was 20, so um, just generally, just around two or something. Two, I'm sorry, what? Maybe 2002. 2002. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, trained with uh, Rafi. Um, we call him Amaguro, and uh, trained with his his dad, uh, Lolo Guro Isidro Pambuan, and um, that was. You know, he was the beginning. He was my foundation. Um, Pampuan is definitely like a, a signature of, you know, it's um, it's really like, you know, your parents, your family, right? The, the first mm. people you know is your parents. So um, he was like a father to me. So profoundly influential on uh, movement and concept. Um, and he opened another world for me. Uh, when I moved to California, I was um, 24. So it was like 2000, um, 2004, 2005, something like that. Um, I met with the FMA community there. And then on my second trip to the Philippines, it was totally different experience because I had networks um, with, with the FMA people in the Philippines. So... Mm -hmm. Back to uh, uh, Guru Rafi. I mean, I, he, some of his names come up before about having him on here and all that. I mean, just quickly, like, what can you just tell us about the system? Just, in, you know, really quick. Uh, Pambuan Arnis, um, he, he's a sixth generation on his mother and his father's side. So he's pedigree. And um, mm. Laguna styles are known for their long range. Um, okay. So he... I would say the classical pump one, um, it does focus a lot on long range because it's bladed. And mm. um, he he definitely like developed a lot of the close range, like stick grappling and stuff like that. And I think that that came later. Um, oh, when he got, okay, that would make sense. He would incorporate that, okay, okay. But the classical style is really long range blade. Oh, Laguna. Okay. Okay. Neat. Neat. Okay. Okay. So, all right, you go to California, you're making your second trip over there. Mm -hmm. Um, so did you get, like, who'd you get to train with when you were over there? Uh, I uh, Rapido Realismo. Um, good oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. He's another one. His name. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And I trained with, a, I've trained with a bunch of people, a lot of them, you know, no names. And then, mm. you know, some of my dad's friends in, in the backyard, you know, again, like no names. On my second trip to the Philippines, I, um, you know, like I said, Rafi opened another world for me. So I, I started digging really deep into my own uh, ancestry bloodline. And I found out that I had uh, a great uncle who, who trained, who came from Antique and moved to Mindanao. 
Uh, bad oh. news is he passed away, but he taught his son. His son passed away, but he taught his son, who's my uncle, who's still alive, in uh, in North Cotabato, in Mindanao. So I took this incredible trip. Um, you know, I don't I don't speak Ilongo Visayan, um, but I I had a friend who did, and he he came with me. We rode like, you know, a boat and then a jeepney and then another boat and then a motorcycle up the mountains, and eventually found my uncle, and then his. Um, it was it was really like a out of like a a travel you know show or something like that. Right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, now you're jumping from train, plane, boat, motorcycle, yeah. but you're going yeah. up. through the jungles, up up the mountain roads, and then we finally found him. And he only trains uh, family, so I was in luck. And um, and then another cool thing was his next door neighbor was a, t a Tabado instructor. Um, oh, know, oh, oh, Jim Bobby. Ah, okay. okay. The long, the long stick from uh, Bohol. And I didn't realize that there's a whole region in Mindanao that they speak Ilongo. So I was in the Ilongo region of Mindanao. Oh, okay. How interesting. How interesting. Wow, wow. So the uncle that you're referencing, what could you just tell us about his style, if anything? Um, the style is called Paranantuad. And there's, um, they, they use a longer stick. Um, not quite as long as Tapato, but mm. longer than, you know, the 28 inch standard. Your general 28. Okay. Okay. And then, um, okay. they have an indoor, an indoor, uh, variation, indoor system where they hold the stick in the center, like a, uh, Joe staff, bow staff, whatever. Oh, all right. Okay. Interesting. interesting. So that's their okay. So, mm -hmm. Any edge weapons? I mean, is it mostly a stick system or? Yeah. Yeah. We'll see. Okay. 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 So, all right. So you got the two trips there. Um, your initial was under uh, Guru Rafi um, and all that. So when did you, so upon coming back, when did you, did you return back to California post second trip or did you, or did you go back to Florida? Um, actually I went three times mm. and then I, um, the last trip I wanted, I, I actually I was planning on moving there, and then my mom got sick, and I moved back to Florida. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So when you returned back to Florida, did you continue with uh, Guru Rafi, or at that point were you kind of taking yes. some different things and making your own? <clears throat> yeah, I did. Yeah, so um, I was I was under uh, Pumbuan system for over twenty years. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So at which point? Okay. So before you made your own system, it sounds like you did you were you teaching before your your own system? I was teaching Pumbuan, yeah. Oh, okay, okay. So then what all right, so the transition to your own system, yeah. About when and and why? Uh <clears throat> say it's so these these are these are the hard questions. <laughs> um I say it was about <laughs> 2010. Well, I remember in the Philippines. I would show, I would show people some techniques, and and they they would they knew pump one system, so they would they would tell me that this is not pump one, <clears throat> and I guess that was the where I, I realized that it was a different path, and it, it and it was evolving into something different. Mm. So uh, it was about 2010, whenever um, we really started to deliberately develop it okay and then did you call it at that were you calling it what did you call it at that point um kind of no name is it yeah that's right yeah just that, curious. okay so no 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 so what uh what it consists of in like in other words at 2010 like you know what did you have in your system like what modules or like what were your, what was your focus um well, I mean, that's that's a that's another hard question. Um, <clears throat> you know, I I'd say that the the intermediate um, stage of your development FMA is 
So FMA is known for flow, right? Mm. So when you start out, you're like clunky and off, off time. Um, and then when you get to it, intermediate, now you're flowing, you're moving. And a lot of people mistake the intermediate stage for advanced. But the intermediate stage would be flow, while the advanced would be pop, and the pop would be broken rhythm. Broken rhythm, okay, okay. Change up the cadence and what have you, okay. okay. Yeah, so a different timing. Okay, interesting. This is, the way, broke those three out. this is just the way I see it, right? Yeah, yeah. So I guess, no, I think that's fine. So I guess you know? that's when it started to change. Okay. So now throughout that, now far as, so I got you, you know, intermediate flow, advance, timing, broken rhythm, you know, fluctuation and cadence. What were your weapons? Like, were you, was it blunt web translation, edge weapon translation, empty hand? Did you kind of have it all in there? Or was there, or were there areas that you were more specific in as far yeah. as teaching? Um, yeah, it's all in there. But um, the adaptation to like our region would be, I, I, I still feel like FMA is missing um, hook defense, like from punches. Empty and, hand? Yes, empty hand. Yeah, and yeah. Clinch, clinch, clinch defense. So when somebody grabs you, grabs your head with both arms instead of grabbing your hand or whatever. Yeah. And yeah. I think there's not enough emphasis on knife defense. There's a lot of FMA guys doing knife dueling and they do knife offense. Mm. Emphasis. Interesting. And what you see out there for his empty hand against knife is some of it's actually pretty scary what they think they're going to pull off real time, real speed, yeah. real aggression, real adversity. You know, um, interesting that you, you, um, you realize that that's, that's fascinating. Wow. Yeah. I mean, right. You can't argue that. I mean, you're seeing the offense on offense, offense, offense. Well, yeah. Yeah. How about so when you're, walking alone and somebody comes up on you and attacks you. <laughs> yeah, and you're more, likely, you know, uh, encounter a fist or a knife on the street than you are a full size mm -hmm. or double stick. Yeah. So that's yeah. a huge emphasis on Panung Tulkan and the knife work. That's awesome. Well, uh, I mean, that's like, yeah, I, to me, knife's my major, man, because that's what I'm gonna see out there. Like I like stick and all that, but you know what I mean? But uh, so far as getting back to empty hand, are there in the clinch, which you mentioned, are there particular systems that you're drawn from? No, are you drawn from Greco-Roman? Are you drawn from Thai clinch? Are you drawing stuff from there to like in, within your curriculum? Oh, uh, just translating principles and concepts. Mm, okay, okay. Yeah, and what, what works? Um, you know, there's a lot of heavy influence like, uh, you know, I've never formally trained, you know, Greco-Roman or Balintawa, mm. Muay Thai. All of those things are very, very influential, though. Yeah, yeah. I think so. Like, I totally agree. Like, 400%. Like, when you know, it's like, I'm a big fan of the two-on-one -on -one and knife. But you got to know, like, you know, like, you're the Russian, you know, when you transition from the Russian Thai to the outside, I mean, over, up, under, I mean, Man, you better play with it all, you know what I mean? Um, and then the empty hand, getting back to that, you know, it's funny. It's like one of the major, I'm sure you've seen on FMA discussion, the whole thing with Pontiac and, and this, that, and the other thing and all that and Western creation versus, you know, what really occurred over there or what is really truly indigenous. Um, are you really drawn from uh, Sealot as far as the empty hand? Our empty hand comes directly from the blade. Ah, interesting. Let's hear it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So in other words, are you turning into like from here, like I'm just throwing this out there, for example, a number one hammer fist, number two to be back fist, some along those lines. Uh, I'd have to really show you for you to understand, but yeah, yeah I don't want to put you on the spot. I'm just thinking, I'm just, you know, guessing. Yeah. Our <laughs> boxing comes directly from the blade. So they're just, okay. They're just transferred concepts and principles. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. All right. All right. So now, all right. So they got everything. What are you doing? You got uh, long and short in there. 
Um, you know, uh, Spotty Adaga. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. I'm huge focus. Wow. Spotted Daga. I, I like the Spotted Daga because of, you know, the two ranges. And mm. it honestly, like, it helps develop the jab for me. Um, the knife jab is the real value and the coordination. But not a huge emphasis on that, you know. <clears throat> Again, because I don't, I don't feel like we're ever going to encounter it. But I just do it for... Yeah, yeah, you know, it's funny because when I was coming in through, you know, in the beginning and I was first showing it and I kind of regret having this attitude. I'm like, why the hell do I want to do this for? Mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm not going to see this out there. I'm like, why you, like, why do I have to do this? But now looking back, I wish I was a little open minded because I think there's some great things you can get. I mean, obviously, you're not, you know, crossing midline. I mean, obviously all that, but just left hand working in conjunction, the pairing and all that. But like you said, you know, it's a just argument. Are you going to spend you know, all your time in that when you could be putting on empty hand against knife or empty hand? You know what I mean? You know, it's legit argument. Um, so, all right. So that's, that sounds interesting. So you got basically everything in there as far as, you know, translations, blunt wedge, I mean, uh, edge weapon, you know, empty hands and what have you. Um, when did you, so uh, have you seen some, you know, uh, I mean, it sounds like you've been involved in your system since 2010. I mean, mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. And um, so what, um, so basically, is there any, you know, so the basically as far as the accumulation of your system and what you drew from, is it mostly just self findings and all that or self discovery? Yes. Um okay. I met with somebody in the Philippines um, and, um, you know, uh, he would talk about the unseen and Sanduguan is a very external system, right? It's, it's very literal. There's, there's not a lot of mysticism to it, but definitely things that happen like in your training, you know, where um, the self-development things that, um, the treasures that you find, right? Only through experience and only through play and only through fighting. So, yeah, I, I, it it came from there. Um, you know, um, my... I also heard somebody say before that um, people's style of fighting and, and martial arts, it's it does reflect like their stature. It does reflect like, you know, their weight and how long their arms are or whatever. But the most influential factor is actually their personality and their background. Mm -hmm. So okay. I, came, I came from a really heavy working class family. Um, both of my parents were horticulturists and, and um, landscapers. I had a landscape company myself. So um, I grew up with a shovel, you know, so, and, you know, now I swing a hammer, you know, uh, with foraging, a lot of those movements, they're all there, you know, they come out, okay. right? Yeah. FMA huh? was developed by farmers, right? Farm yeah, right. I mean, farm, they were, mm -hmm. they were initially farm tools. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So th that's a reflection of um, the lifestyle is a reflection of, of the culture, right? The culture is a reflection. Okay. All right. So, um, okay. T teaching. So, how do you? Uh, let's get into like your your system in teaching. Um, I mean, obviously, I know with COVID on here, but it seems like your state, like you guys, are not doing that bad. Like you're, you guys are able to have classes. Um, no, do you guys have to be masked up, or what's that? Do you guys have to be have, be masked up when you're having a group class or so? No, no there's no requirement to be masked up. Um, we're allowed to gather. Uh, Florida is pretty lenient. I was gonna say, I know your governor is like ours. I mean, we're still masked up, six feet away. Uh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I don't well, know where we're ever getting out of it. We're also known for our weapons leniency. <laughs> I know, I know, I know, I'm, I'm yeah. like, it's funny because we're, 
I keep hearing that I'm, be, I'm gonna be moving to Florida soon. <laughs> um, and then it gets getting rough. Um, so, okay, so all right, so you saw, so you have group classes. I saw, I checked your website out. You're also doing online classes too. Is that still going on? Yes, we have an online subscription for tutorials. Okay. Okay. And those all are right. only, you know, supplement for live in person training. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, good, good, good. Uh, good for what it is, but it's incomplete. Mm -hmm. Okay. How often are you offering your group classes? I uh, have public twice a week and a private once a week. Oh, okay. All right. Awesome. Awesome. We were, okay. But recently, that was okay. important. And um, Naples is waiting for you, Dean. <laughs> oh, right. I'm telling you, you never know. Might be seeing me. <laughs> um, so when you teach, I mean, same thing. You got your kind of your beginning, intermediate, advanced, and is there a guru or do you have a, a title before guru? Uh, yeah, Takapaktu or Takapak Sanai, you know, which is the assistant okay. instructor, junior instructor. And I have three. Of okay. Them. Mm -hmm. All three. Uh, of them. Okay. All right. All right. But we huh. really in our class, like rank is like the last thing. Mm -hmm. um, it's really not a, it's not, um, it's, it's not even discussed. It's not even a, a thing at all. Um, I don't, e I don't divide the class into like beginners and intermediates. Mm -hmm. I have everybody, I'll start everybody with a, a drill and then I'll move, I'll pair certain advanced people up together that I want them, you know, moving on into, into the next concept extra and then i'll work with people individually everybody individually okay so and then um what's your uh, your emphasis on sparring i mean do you wait to students get to a certain level or do you introduce it to them right away what's your take filipino swimming lesson see i'm the same way man first day they come they're they're doing at least hand engagement. They're doing something. <laughs> yeah, sink or swim. Um, and, yeah. you know, I think that's part of tradition, you know, of the some hard training. Uh, you, you can only respect the weapon when you when you feel it, right? I think so, partly, yeah. Yeah, and um, so we emphasize, you know, minimal armor, uh, live sparring, and... I do it as about as often as my body will let me <laughs> these days. Yeah, I know. The thing I know when you're getting up there. I mean, I love it, but man, like I, I know you do feel it as you get, depending on what you're doing and how much you're doing it and who you're doing it with. And <laughs> <laughs> but I agree. But I, I, I like your take on that. Like, as soon as it, like to me, it's so important that even if they're new, they see like what is coming down, like. Yeah, you know what I mean, and they get a chance to experience it. Even and it doesn't have to be crazy. I mean, just like mm -hmm. hand sparring or just. But yeah. I think it's so important. So there, there's a huge difference um, for me between drilling, sparring, and fighting. Right? Uh, they're three totally different things, and a lot of people don't understand that they're different. Yeah. Um. So what I, I throw the, the beginners in right away with a heavy emphasis on control and zero malice, right? Because we are not fighting, right? Right. You're just right. You're training together to prove one another, not to freaking injure one another. Yeah. Yes. When you're fighting, you're trying to hurt each other. You're trying to injure yeah, each other. Yeah, yeah. Somebody's so right. Yeah. We're not doing that. Um, so mm -hmm. it's... We emphasize control with intent. Okay. No, no, that mm -hmm. sounds no. That sounds great. I mean, that would, you know, for new uh, newcomers coming in. And uh, so, have you been able to? You got good group class. I mean, all that you didn't get hit, hit hard by COVID or anything. Um. Yeah. You know. Um, no. It, it, the thing. I don't know what's going on in Connecticut and, and the rest of the country, but. In Florida, um, 
Floridians are, are sick of quarantine. Good for they, you guys. Good for you guys. They, they want to go and they want to go look at the trees and they want to go run. And, yeah, they want to live their life. <laughs> yeah. The outdoor fitness has like exploded here. Yeah. Go to any park yeah. and everything working out, working out. And um, to me, that's what a healthy society looks like is people are out doors and they're doing no, stuff I know, I know. this is getting like up here it's i mean like i can't speak on all the southern states of course but up here i don't know if it's actually i don't know what really to attribute it to but it's just this whole like fear that's been instilled in these people i mean mm -hmm. like it is just you know and, and uh, i'm have the same lens as you you know and i'm just like but when the majority has that lens it's tough mm -hmm. Because you know what I mean, and you know now it's mandated, like yeah. you know. So yeah, we have we have a self responsibility policy, you mm. know. Um, nobody's nobody's going to be responsible for you, you know. If you're yeah. ready, don't come out, right? If you are, mm. oh. so yeah, yeah, right, right. Just be right, be respectful of others, and just exactly common sense, and you're not going to expose others if you're yeah yeah absolutely absolutely well i'm just keeping track of time for you just so okay um folks that are just jumping in tell us you're watching unfortunately this one is going to be on the shorter side today like an hour so um if uh if you haven't tell us where you're watching from please do and we're going to get into very shortly his weapons um uh, let before we jump into the weapons though mm -hmm. Let's just go over this post. Like I, I found, you know, I, I found it profound. I, I enjoyed your poster on Facebook. And basically the title, if I'm not mistaken, was a controversy of innovating tradition. Is that, am I correct in that? Yeah. Okay. And so, yeah, why don't you tell, I mean, again, I, I thought it was great. Yeah, the audacity. <laughs> yeah, the audacity that you would even think that way. <laughs> yeah. Who gave you the right? Shame on you. Yeah, so um, what, you know, what we're doing is we're, we're preserving a tradition, you know. Mm. Is it traditional? It's not. Yeah. And in, in my opinion, you can't be 100% traditional, you know. Um, yeah. For numerous reasons. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I spent a lot of time in the, um, on the reservation in South Dakota, you know, with, with the with the Lakota people, and they would have ceremonies. And they, people Did would you talk, really? Yeah, people would oh, talk about what's wow. traditional. And in reality, it's like, you don't follow the buffalo anymore, right? So then it's not traditional. It's not 100% traditional. Yeah. But but that's not the question, right? The question right. is, is it from the heart, mm. right? Is it sincere? Like that, to me, like that's the question, right? Am I trying to sell you shit or am I trying to- right. are, you, are you coming, right, are you being or, genuine? Yeah. Am I trying to act, help you, you know, better yourself? Yeah, so you're not gonna be a snake oil salesman? <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, no, I, yeah, no, I, that, that, you know, you have to respect that. I mean, that's, yeah. Yeah, you know I mean? but we don't, um, we don't swing the machete for work um, anymore. You know, I, I do sometimes, but it's not my livelihood, right? And, and thank God, because nobody would wish mm -hmm. on their family. It's a very hard yeah. life. Yeah. Uh, you know, being a cook, being a rice farmer. There's nothing glamorous about that. No, I know. I mean, right. Yeah, so, absolutely. Uh, so let's not, uh, I don't, I don't want to see people romanticize that and glamorize it. Mm. Um, I don't want to see people romanticize violence because there's nothing glamorous about violence. Nothing glamorous. Absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. If real violence has ever touched you or your, or your family, then you would know that it's not something that you wish for you don't want that no no on anybody for that matter no absolutely yeah. so as far as like we we are preserving a tradition 
that's 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 my primary in, intention. It's my primary objective is to preserve an intention, uh, preserve mm. tradition with the highest of integrity. However, I'm not even I'm half white, right? I'm I'm Filipino, but I grew up in Florida. Like I'm more southern than I am anything else. Yeah, as you been like you would say, like no, and these, that's why I asked you about the Indians. I'm part American Indian. Yeah. So when you said South Dakota, that's like the heart. You know what I mean? So yeah. 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 So you know, we can pretend like you know that we're that we have the lifestyle of our ancestors, but we don't. I know. I know. Just to, I know. Yeah. And we shouldn't try to recreate that. We shouldn't try to, you know, contrive. Right. And like in today, why would you want to? Like you yeah. kind of, like you were kind of mentioning, you know what I mean? Like, why would you, you know? Um, well, there's a lot to be learned from manual labor. And I think that yeah. that's missing in FMA is mm -hmm. a lot of people, they don't, you know, in our last retreat, I had my students and they hated me for it. Some of them, but I had them chopping wood. You know, oh no kidding okay because the chef the chef's like uh, i need all these these logs i need them cut very special they have to be this big so, oh okay okay so you can make the proper size coals because you know we, mm. we we roasted a lechon a whole pig right we killed oh, really? oh my gosh oh, and um, we're probably going to be doing that for every retreat so mm. so yeah i had had all the students you know um office people you know, <laughs> people have never held an axe before and or even swung one. Yeah. Yeah. So and that was it was a lesson. And the lesson was how to generate power and, and how to use your hands. Yeah, while they were getting wood for the chef. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Interesting. So was that now are you referring to uh Chad's retreat there? The one he just had? Um no, this was our this is our retreat. Yeah, our Sanduguan Kali winter retreat. This was last February. So okay, so Chad, all right, because I know Chad was somewhere around there. If I'm not, if I'm correct. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, so is, is yours a whole weekend thing as well? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so where do you guys go? Just uh, uh, we were at Arizona in Deleon Springs. So somewhere by Orlando. Okay. It's about an hour away from Orlando. Okay, okay. And you guys, everybody kind of just goes up there, camps for the weekend and what have you? That was our first one there. And then um, we're, our next retreat, retreat is probably going to be in November. Mm. I have guest instructors, um, Chris Durbin and Dan Lipman. Chris Durbin, Kuntal, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay, all right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, um, oh, interesting. That sounds neat. Oh, wow. Okay. You guys all uh, camp out in the whole deal. Wow. Interesting. Okay. All right. Yes. Just for sake of time, folks, um, we're going to jump into the weapons. Unfortunately, he's got to leave an hour. So I want to try to get as much as I can. All right. Uh, do, 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 do. All right. So, what, um, okay. So, the weapons, like, what made you, um, I guess, like, want to, you know, make your own weapons? I mean, what was the, um, far as the incentive or inspiration? Um, well, definitely FMA. Mm. Grandmaster uh, Fred Lazo was one of my greatest inspirations. I never actually apprenticed under him, but I mm. did from him. I actually interviewed him and I got it. I made a little short documentary about him. Oh, okay. him. So uh, I think if he was still around, like I would, I would have definitely apprenticed under him and as far as i know he was the only one doing it doing this in florida and now i'm this in florida if somebody does know somebody else please let me know because i want to learn more stuff so um but i started a lot of the stuff that i started to make is because i wanted a lot of the things that i make because i do i do um other mediums right hmm. i I wanted something for myself and I couldn't find it. So I couldn't find exactly what I wanted. So I would just make it myself. Wow, well, there's a solution right there, right? I'll just do it myself. So uh, when did you start doing it? Like, uh, was this some years back or? Yeah, I started, um, so my mom 
passed away in 2009. So I started in 2009 and um, I made, I made my first knife and I was apprenticing under a blacksmith here in Orlando. And then I lost my mom and then I stopped. I just completely stopped for years. And then I picked it back up a few years later. And then in the past uh, two, or th two or three years, I, I got serious with it. And um, it was really quarantine that helped me really develop a lot of stuff <laughs> actually. Yeah, yeah. If you're stuck in, I mean, right, to, you know, to yeah. do something. So, wow. So, you, all right. So, your first kind of trial and error was a knife. Okay. Mm -hmm. And, wow. So, you actually went, okay. So, that's interesting. You actually went and, you know, with a blacksmith. And, uh, wow. No kidding. That, that'd be interesting. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, was that a long uh, kind of thing that you stayed with him or like far as under him? It wasn't. Um, but I, I, I learned from I learned from a lot of people, right? Same thing with FMA. Mm. Uh, you pick up things here and there. Yeah, um, yeah, okay, okay. More of a formal apprenticeship with uh, Chef Magnus Dantzler, and he he was the chef at our retreat. He's also one of my best friends, mm. and he's he specializes in culinary blades. He's a chef. So he's oh, okay, all right knives he has like a, a waiting list and people from japan order his knives and oh no kidding oh he's that high end okay okay yeah so um okay. and i had another instructor here in uh Crialdi, the historical school of art here in, in uh, winter park or in florida but really honestly i learned the most from youtube is that right wow so with a so with a kind of a foundation youtube was and that's really because, helpful. That's because you can always, you know, go back to the video and watch it again. And, and that's you know, true. It's right there. Yeah, you know I mean, watch. you have that constant library. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, you know, YouTube is is a great resource of, of free education. No kidding. I know it's. I know it is. You can't deny it's. Man, it's like it's reference. Wow. So, would you watch actual guys from the Philippines or just blacksmith in general? I, Wish there was more Filipino pandai on YouTube. Um, most of the documentary, mm. real Filipino pandai, are from Westerners. You know, just doing this their home video uh, cameras. Uh, oh, okay, okay. Or um, documentation on the pandai besi of mm. Indo Indonesia, Malaysia. Um, and this is this is part of what I, I I would like to if any kind of influence in this area I I want to see the Filipino Hyundai be recognized as yeah. honorable professional and not some peasant you know that that can't no even... I know no. yeah well I'm trying to get one on here like mm -hmm. I'm trying to. Um find one that, you know, that's, I, you know, not that they need to be fairly well known. I'm just trying to find one that would be willing to come on and okay, just basically an episode kind of just walk us through the whole, uh, you know. Yeah, I'll help you. Oh, I, oh, I would greatly appreciate that. If you know any of them, you know, I'd bring both of you on. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I yeah. want a platform, you know, I want, I want people to see, mm. you know, uh, it's weird what happened, you know, when Forge and Fire hit the world, it's like, it, I know. What could happen? Freaking blew up. You no. Know, <laughs> what the good thing is, um, people are seeing um, how much into a blade. Uh, it's yeah, not, like how much work and effort, yeah. and yeah, yeah, yeah. That the bad part. Everybody's a, a blacksmith. <laughs> yeah, now everybody's going. Yeah, 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 I can make you that. Yeah, I know. Before you know, you're getting uh, wow. Yeah, if you could, I would really appreciate that. If you could, definitely, I'd sure. bring you both on. I would like to. I would like the community, just as you mentioned, to see that, you know, like what they really go through and do, you know, yeah. that would be neat. Um, so, all right. So you took a little break, you know, because uh, your fortunate mom's passing and then you came back in when, um, I guess, like, what was, when did you make your, what was the first sword you made? Oh, oh, um, might've been, um, it depends on what you call a sword, right? 
Yeah, anything, I guess, on, on the longer end, let's say that. Something like the new yeah. thing. Yeah. You know. I think it was a Taliban. Oh, Taliban. Okay, okay. Mm. Wow. And um, how, and, uh, how did that, um, I mean, just, you know, is it a lengthy process? I mean, like, generally speaking, just generally, and again, generally speaking, like something like a Taliban or, you know, a GNU thing, the average time to make it. Like just generally speaking, mm -hmm. depends on you know what it is. Um, mm -hmm. It's about thirty to forty hours. Thirty to forty hours, and that's like from start to yeah. all the end. Okay, okay. 30, depending, you know, because it might be an elaborate project, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Yeah, if it's a compi line or something, like yeah, that's long. Here, like, that's like it's. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're gonna be okay. Like, no, no, that's yeah. So and that's like uh, so. When you're doing it, what is, I guess, what is the hardest aspect of it? I mean, is it the pounding out the metal? I mean, what's the, I guess, what's the toughest part of it? Keeping it straight. Mm. Yeah, that's one of the hardest things. Uh, during heat treatment, um, tends to warp. Oh, okay. All right. Start out with a very straight blade. And then you plunge it in the, the oil or the water, and all of a sudden it's wah. Like oh, this. it starts to warp. Oh. Yeah. Okay. It'll stay that way. So, um, so there, you know, there's there's a process that you can do to try to help. Mm, interesting. All right, all right. So, when did you like start? Like, I guess, kind of tinkering around, kind of, I guess, hobby where you were like, hey, you know what? I could start really making these and and sell these. Uh, when did that come about? Um. I guess when people got interested. <laughs> oh, when they start seeing your stuff, that's what happens. Like that's what happens. Like yeah. uh, Brian Rodriguez, he just he just popped and say, "Look, he doesn't make nothing. He doesn't make to what you're you're doing, but he makes more trainers." Oh, he makes beautiful. So, but what's so funny is he started pop, he popped like one out. He sent me one. And I'm like, hey, I'm just gonna be honest with you. You're gonna start getting tons of calls and tons of messages, mm -hmm. and like two days later. To no avail, he was started getting drowned. And I'm like, I told you, I go careful what you wish for because you were going to get, you yeah. know, and then the hairpins and the whole, you know, so he was getting clobbered there for a while. Yeah. Wow. Well, um, so then, okay, so what, uh, all right, let's look at this. What do you think are some of your best creations? Like something that, like, or, or I tell you what, best creations or most popular, where people are mostly, seeking you out for uh it seems like the ganoon thing is the big hit what is uh, with that the ganoon thing <laughs> is that is it is there just that many bikini terja practitioners out there like what is it with the ganoon thing i just it's i think somebody somewhere said it's a reverse katana <laughs> it has the back four inches that yeah 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 all right i, I could you know that makes sense okay uh, it's just it's a it's a novelty, you know. It's it's different. There's there's really negative curve blades are very rare. Mm, that's definitely a negative curve. Yeah, matter of fact, I don't. I mean, I'm sure you do because you you know obviously you know more than I do. But that's only uh, off the top of my head. I can't think of another negative curve blade. Yeah, I'm sure there are. I just can't think of it. You know. Yeah, they're very rare. And to yeah. be honest, with you, I would say that most people who want a Ginun thing, they don't know how to cut anything with it. Actually, speaking of which, let's show your video. Let's show this. And actually, folks, this is not only a Ginun thing, but he's also going to show he's cutting. All right, let's mm -hmm. check it out. Yeah, in disclosure, I, I, I'm not really cutting with a Ginun thing either. I didn't, I didn't train with that blade. I got to be honest with you, it's just not my, it's not my favorite. I, I'm not saying I have anything against them. I'm just saying it's just not my favorite. That's beautiful, though. Gorgeous. Wow, wow, wow. And there goes the water bottle. <laughs> All right. That was beautiful. I made the blade. Wow. Thank you. So now you're obviously, in addition to the blade, I mean, you're obviously. I mean, you're you're hand carving the wood and all that. That's got that can't be. That's got to be timely. Wow. Well, I use a rotary. Yeah, so still I'm, though. I mean, that can't be quick. Mm -hmm. yeah, um, yeah. Um, 
it's one of my favorite parts actually is the woodwork i mean because you're i've seen some of your hands they're very ornate i mean that can't be like just yeah wow what are you doing for it now are you actually putting anything on it as far as like is it the natural wood color are you preserving in any shape way or form or yeah, anything I, like that i put walnut oil on it walnut oil regardless of regardless of the wood that you're using walnut oil and that ginunting in the video i think that that scabbard was stained Stain okay, plus. so you can stain if you wanted to. Mm -hmm. oh, okay, all right. Um, and then for this one, this compilan, it was just burned it with a tool. That is beautiful. How long did it take you to make from start to finish make both the scabbard and the and the and the, and the blade? I, no, I, I um. I didn't measure this one. <laughs> I didn't time it. This was just okay. I was just I was just curious. Can you pull it out? Can you show us? Yeah. That's absolutely beautiful. And so camera's reversed, so I'm trying to <laughs> No, 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 we're seeing no, we're seeing that's beautiful. Wow, 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 wow. So now, do you get a lot of requests for those? Um, no. No, it's not, just not the, yeah. the last one I made sold. Beautiful. Well, this horse uh, hair. These are American quarters. No kidding. <laughs> All right. Yeah, so I have pounded them and. Oh, okay. Okay. Did some sanding. And oh, neat. Wow. See, I mean, that is that to me is beautiful. I I would to, over the Gnu thing. I mean, I'm just I'm being a little biased, of course, but you're saying the Gnu thing like everybody else is the most popular. Jeez, yeah, mm -hmm. beautiful. Yeah, man. What you what would you say your next maybe best selling one would be? Um, let me see. Yeah, I'm not really sure. Um, if you had a guess, or what's are popular. You know, the best sellers are the knives, you know. Oh, oh the, so the knives actually, okay, all right. Yeah, so like, it's part of my, this is my karambit from my combat line. So I, wow. I, the, I only have uh, two of my my knives that are actually jet cut. This is one of them. Mm. Okay, okay. This ring really difficult. You have to drill, man, you know, to drill that into a, high carbon steel it's very difficult wow so if people were interested in any of these now do you have pricing on your website no no all of my oh. orders um come directly you know through email or through, through social media oh you kind of give them a quote what you would think it would kind of cost based on what yeah. they want so to speak okay yeah okay um they're you know most of them are custom yeah yeah no that yeah right no exactly i mean yeah so i don't you know one thing mm. to keep I don't manufacture. Yeah, you're not like popping out like ten new things. I'm making probably. have any employees. It's just me and and my little shop, my little. Yeah. Dip. Um. So I don't. You know, you can't. Most knife knife enthusiasts understand why handcrafted is priced the way it's priced. Mm, no, I mean, but, I'm looking at it right now. <laughs> yeah, and others they they don't know because we're used to buying crap from amazon right so um and then also if anybody's watching from the philippines um i don't ship to the philippines unfortunately and and part of the reason is uh the difference in our economic system you know um it's because a lot of filipinos are asking why why is it you know four times five times as much in the u.s well it's because our rent is 10 times as much <laughs> yeah yeah so that's, that's the yeah, yeah. So also shipping to the philippines is very challenging because i've had things shipped to the philippines that never get you know no i've heard some horror stories unfortunately yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah like if you don't have to why would you just mm -hmm. run the hassle doing it and what have you um so you want so to um i'm sorry go ahead you want to see some more I want the I want the the ear grown axe there you got in the back there. I thought that'd be kind of neat. Check that out. Yeah. Wow. 
Look at that. So talk about mm. a negative. That's a negative curve. Okay. But yeah. Okay. Negative curves are, are really hard to um to sharpen because you can't do it on a flat stone, right? Oh, okay. Yeah. You have your flat stone. Now the this part gets sharp. Uh. This doesn't get sharp, right? So you have to use the corner of your stone. Which oh, so, great, so time consuming. Okay, yeah. I got you. Stone, not flat anymore. It'll make it mm. round. Or, or you can use a rod. Okay. Um, I, oh, I, um, mm -hmm. I use my platen on my grinder, but you know, I have a technique for that. Mm. That's so, like ones, tang runs down, about to here. Okay. Yeah, and it's pinned. I don't know if you can see that. Actually, I can. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that brass. So that. Mm, so yeah, I can see it. Yeah. Yeah. Not gonna come out. And then that's black. That's beautiful, man. So now, are you getting? So are you like? Uh, are you backed up? I mean, do you are you getting a lot of orders in consistently? Um, I closed the books for the Atlanta show. So. No. Yeah. Wow. I, and that's, that show, I hear that show is pretty, uh, that show is, I mean, not only just well known, but there's tons of people there, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they missed last year because of COVID. So I, I think that this year is going to come back with a vengeance. I, I know. I want to, it's always been, you know, one time, just, to, you know, one year just to see it and experience it. And, mm -hmm. you know, I hear it's, I hear it's incredible. incredible. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. What else you got there to show? What other goodies? Um, so this one I finished today. What we got there? It's a long. Wow. And that's for somebody who ordered that? Uh, no, this is for the So it's not for sale. Uh, oh, okay, okay. Come to Atlanta in June. <laughs> oh, so it's in June. Okay. All right. All right. Yeah. So it's June. So how many are you bringing there? Okay. Um. Well, as many as I, as you can carry. <laughs> so yeah, this uh, um, it roughly translates to the the nose of the shrimp. Mm. Man, so, well, I hope you. Wow, I hope you do well there. I bet you will, based on what you're showing us. Yeah. So the Jeez. and the scabbard, which I think is really beautiful, is no, yeah, no, no, it's absolutely, yeah, it's just beautiful work. Bolivian rose. Wow. How long did I mean? Just again, just curious. How long did it take you to make that? Um, about a week. Yeah. yeah. Now, when we say a week, like how many hours a day are you like putting towards it? Yeah, um, I guess that was a little less than a week, eight hours a day. Yeah. Oh, so eight hours a day, man. You're just. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. And I have uh, a novelty, which is seahorse. Look at that. Beautiful. This cam camera's reversed, so I'm sorry. Yeah, no, 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 no. It's, it's coming through perfect. No. Coming through perfect. Yeah. Oh yeah. Everybody can see him. Yeah. This is gorgeous. So this is purple heartwood. And purple I, heartwood. Okay. Yeah. Once in a while, I like to make something that's just kind of ridiculous and not. Practical. So do you now when you're going to some of the exotic woods like that? Do you have to order them? I mean, are they available? How do you get them? Um, we have an exotic wood exporter here in or importer. In, um, in oh, okay, okay. That blade is absolutely beautiful. Wow. Man. Yeah, hopefully this show will uh, will get you some business. <laughs> you know, it'd be, man, uh, between this and Atlanta. Yeah. <laughs> what do you got here? Another Tagalog blade. Tagalog, okay. And this one's, uh, it's not clean. Cutting stuff with it. Mm. I really believe in test cutting. 
more people should do it. And yeah. You'll find out. You'll find out that you're you're not as skilled as you thought you were. Yeah, right. If you don't, yeah, yeah. I'm starting to, yeah. I and I hold myself to that. I I have to do it more too. You know what I mean? I, yeah. And, yeah. Wow. Wow. Just beautiful, man. Uh, that's beautiful. Wow. Absolutely gorgeous. Yes. Man, oh man, man. So do you, not, do you have any currently for sale on your website? Uh, no, sir. Okay, okay. It's Talibong. Talibong. Hand garden, no, oh, okay. So this is a, um, this is an interlocking scabbard. So it's just two, oh, different, okay. two different kinds of wood, even though it looks like one. Yeah, this, yeah, okay. This is oak, and this is okay. bocote. And I, um, this is a limited edition because I found out I'm allergic to bocote. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, so you had reactions, huh? Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm never oh. going to make this. <laughs> mm. Wow. Yes. Yeah. That's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Wow. Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you. You're getting, um, we're eating all the chicken. <laughs> I think that's, uh, uh, all right, we got a quick question here from Gladys. What would you say was the most difficult blade to make and why? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Gladys. So maybe mo uh, most up uh, uh, to date, I guess. Maybe. <laughs> well, like I said, the uh, the negative curve blades are the most difficult. Uh, the curvy anything curve has a curvature to it. But, yeah. The negative curve. The negative curve. Sorry. Because okay. uh, you know, as I explained with the with the current, yeah. um, whenever you're. You know, if this is this is your platen on your grinder, mm. you can't it, you can't put it flat on there, right? It's not yeah, gonna, I got you. Yeah, yeah. yeah like you're saying, you got to use the edge. Yeah. So you're going to be using angles. Right. So okay. That, that's one of the most difficult things. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Well, here we're coming on that time. Mm -hmm. And believe me, I, I would keep you here half hour longer, but uh, I think there is a, a power to be uh, that trumps mine. So um, just one quick last thing. Mm -hmm. And what I'll do is I'm going to list your websites and all that. So what I do is I download this and then I'll, I'll post it on your wall. Definitely. And you, you, know, right. you can share it to whatever. But I did want to just quickly. Um, what uh, what changes would you like to see in our community for the positive? In the wonderful community of FMA. In the FMA. <laughs> so you can use FMA discussion for an mm -hmm. example you want. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'd like to see the romanticism taken out. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, there's there's nothing glamorous about real violence. There's nothing funny about that. Amen. Yeah. Uh, or hitting somebody. Um, yeah, right, right, right. You know, even... I mean, even just I've seen I've seen demos that are like so violent that you know you're 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 hurting your brother, you know, um, and just for the sake for a demo to look good, yeah, yeah. that's yeah, I'm not down with that either. Yeah, uh, like yeah. Concussion, yeah, a concussion is actually a really big deal. It's not. Yeah, no I'm problem. not. Yeah, that you would you know for it's yeah. selfish. You know what I mean? For you to look good, you're gonna you know at somebody else's cost. You know what I mean? I'd like to see yeah. the romantic taken out. Mm. I would like to see the realism put in, and uh, I'd like to see fitness brought back. Yeah. Remember, there, there's never been a Filipino martial arts warrior, like successful fighter. That was, that was out of shape. Never. Yeah, I know, I know. History, right? <laughs> because they. I, know. I think it's that American right? lifestyle. I don't know. I don't know what else to attribute to. 
it's because of their lifestyle. It's it's a working class art. So I would I would love to see more people, um, you know, bring fitness back to FMA, and um, take out the the politics, and take out the romanticism. All this would be I I I mean I. I love all your reasons. I agree with every single one of them. Politics, man, I just, I don't know. Just don't see it. It's just like, I'm trying, like in my group, like you see how I run it. Mm -hmm. Like zero tolerance. Like there's zero tolerance for name calling. Yeah. Zero tolerance for pointing but, out. And, I mean, I also believe in free speech, you know, and facts. Yeah, yeah but as long as it at nobody's expense. You know, fact, and, fact, you know. feelings. But the, the problem is, um, uh, the filtered lens, the the tiny little hole that you're this window that you're looking at me through, right? Mm. It's not reality, right? Yeah. It's not reality at all. Just a little window into into another world, right? So that's part of the problem is the internet is not a real place, right? Uh, <laughs> I know. I know. And you know, everyone's gonna throw jabs and you know what I mean? Like you're behind a screen for crying out loud. That's what just blows yeah. my mind. You are behind a screen and you're calling this person a name that you never met. Mm -hmm. and it just, it's mind blowing. I don't know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> just like... Yeah. So I'm, um, I think people should be able to say, say what they want, but within reason, within, uh, with consideration. I agree. Yeah. I, I don't have a problem with that. It just, when they, when the name start, Call, name calling starts coming out. Mm -hmm. That's where I draw the line. But yeah, yeah, like I have no problem expressing your opinion. And if you're being really adamant about your opinion, as long as you're just doing it, you're not trampling over people or calling people names. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what I love. Sometimes I wonder if I'm too strict on there. I don't know. I tell you, it's such a hard. I tell you, it's a hard thing. You know. Well, what I love uh, about this discussion is it's all about discussion it's it's there's no mm. you know buy my dvd it's you know no and that's i wanted to keep that way right mm -hmm. yeah now thank you i agree yeah because i wanted to you know you have to well one of the goals was like you're a newbie you come on there and you like have a like a legitimate question about something you're doing or something you may have interest in and all that and they that they could there would be a source of information and all that without getting trampled on because might be perceived because you asked a stupid question. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's what I don't go for. Mm -hmm. But you should be posting more in. I hope you. I hope to see you post more in there, like you did and all that. Your blaze and all that. I think mm -hmm. people would enjoy it. You know. So, but yeah. uh, well, before I get you into trouble, <laughs> um, but yeah, if you, I would, you know, if you don't mind, I'm gonna check. It. If you can find a blacksmith, yeah, I would love that. I think that would sure. be fantastic. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll try to I'll try to help you. Yeah, yeah, and then um bring you on with them, you know, that'd be another that would be another great show, you know. So all right, well I really appreciate you coming on. I mean, this is it was educational, especially on the weapons and all that. I really enjoyed that. So hopefully um you know po you know, post them in on the site. You might get some business out of it. Those are beautiful blades, you know. Thank you. Uh, yeah. And uh hopefully one day we get to meet down there because like I said, um might be just me moving to Florida. Mm -hmm. No, just saying. <laughs> it looks like it might be happening. <laughs> so, but uh, you wife, take care of yourself. What's that? My wife wants me to say hi. This is me, LaBelle. Oh, sure. Hi. Hi there. Mm -hmm. How you doing? I, I, I promise I wouldn't keep him past an hour. So I is think I made good on that. Also. <laughs> Am I a little late? Oh, here's not the Gladys. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Who's that? Who else was that? Question from the other room. Yeah, we've been trying to control ourselves and stay out of the room. So who? That was Gladys? That was Gladys, yeah. Oh, I didn't know she was there. Gladys, get back here and say hello. <laughs> yeah. So, um, can I give you some contacts if people want to um, look me up? Oh, please do. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so yeah. I have the website is sdkali.com. Actually, that I have. Mm -hmm. I have that, and I have your website, which I'm going to put. How about YouTube channel? The YouTube channel is, you're not in the picture. <laughs> the YouTube channel is Sun. Gladys, is that you? <laughs> Gee, thanks, Gladys, for, like, 
like saying hello. <laughs> I continue. I'm sorry to interrupt. No, you're no not. problem. <laughs> okay. I made for the YouTube. The YouTube is Sandugu Ankali. That's S A N D U G U A N Kali K A L I. Okay. And then I have I have another blade channel, but um I don't know how to give you the link. It, it's called Lineage of the Blade, but it's it's so small that you can't find it because I don't have enough. Le so line lineage of the blade? I might be able to find it. Lineage of the blade? Lineage of the blade, yeah. Okay. All right. Now come see me lineage. at the Atlanta June. Man, I would love to one day get it. I know. I know. Yeah. And that's Late June. Show. When I'm sorry, June what? The first weekend of June. First weekend in June. Hey, yeah, you know what? That might be a, just a yeah. nice trip. Just to, <laughs> um, have the the rest of our niece Colorado camp in August. Thank you, Jason May and Chad Bailey for the invitation. Yeah, Chad Bailey, huh? That guy's great, huh? What a great and person. We have our own fall retreat in November. Okay, okay. Well, it sounds like you got a lot of great things going on, and I wish you the best of luck. And uh, hopefully, um, you know, people are gonna start seeing your blades and picking them up and all that. Again, feel free to post anything you want in the in the group there. You know Thank what I mean? You. Um, I, I would. I would seriously. You know, there's, you know, a lot of people in there. I think they would really appreciate what you put in there. So, all right. Well, I mean, yeah. Like I said, look for later. I'll, I'll uh, you'll see that. I'll post a link there from YouTube. Great. Thanks. All right. All right. Oh, anytime. You take care. Now. You take care of yourself. Okay. Take care. Bye. All right, bye bye. And, and, and. All right, so that wraps up 137. Short one tonight. I can't remember doing one that short in ages. <laughs> I don't know, maybe I should make them shorter. Anyway, the next one, who is next? Um, actually. I'm waiting to hear from people. It might be a gap this Thursday, so I'm waiting to hear back from a couple of people. But at any rate, um, hopefully I'm thinking not this weekend, but the following weekend for the raffle. I have to talk to Brian and whoever else, see if they're available on one weekend night where we can raffle this stuff off and all that. So that's going to be coming up soon. All right, folks, if you haven't already, uh, hit the like button. Um, FMA discussion on YouTube. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. We can see this interview and other great ones. And those you watched, thank you, commented. Um, there were no, uh, we had well, a couple questions, but anyway. All right, folks, you take care of yourself, and I'll see you uh, maybe Thursday, if not uh, next week.